Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Another day, another set of testing to be done. This time we're looking at the very first set of official Ryzen Mobile GPU drivers to come from AMD themselves. Owners of Ryzen Mobile laptops everywhere have been waiting for this day for months and months now. So the fact these drivers are finally here is great news for the small but growing community of Ryzen laptop early adopters. So let's backtrack for a moment to tell the full story of Ryzen Mobile laptops. The first devices to use Ryzen Mobile launched at the tail end of 2017. And while performance in some cases was pretty good thanks to the powerful integrated GPU, it quickly became apparent that work needed to be done on the software side. GPU accelerated productivity apps either crashed frequently or didn't work at all, there were issues playing some games on the laptop despite having enough GPU horsepower, plus there were plenty of odds and ends that needed tidying up with new drivers. The hardware was there, it just wasn't very polished and there was a quintessential early adopter feel to the platform. Over time, it became apparent that AMD and the OEMs weren't going to patch these problems in a timely fashion. AMD blamed the OEMs for being extremely slack at pushing out software updates, and that's true to an extent, but Realistically, the platform needed proper drivers available through AMD.com. Throughout 2018, many users discovered that hacking AMD's newer APU drivers to work on their Ryzen mobile laptops delivered a more stable experience with better performance. But this was an unofficial hack together solution rather than AMD or OEMs directly addressing the problems through official update streams. Those who had bought Ryzen mobile laptops for the fast integrated GPU in a portable form factor quickly became frustrated. Users became annoyed at the lack of day one driver optimization for new games, which were available for APU and discrete GPU owners. That annoyance grew into anger as some systems hadn't received a single GPU update for a year, while those with NVIDIA or even Intel GPUs received reasonably regular updates. Plus, without proper drivers, Ryzen mobile owners were left without a lot of the cool driver features available for discrete GPU owners. Thankfully, AMD listened to all the complaints and as of this week has finally launched official Ryzen Mobile GPU drivers that you can download through AMD.com. These drivers can be installed on any Ryzen Mobile device, whether that's a new system or one of the original Ryzen laptops. It's not locked down by OEMs. It's designed to work as a generic updated driver for all. It may have taken over a year, but at least the drivers are now available. Naturally, I wanted to test these new drivers and compare them to the original drivers that shipped with Ryzen Mobile laptops and that ones that didn't get updated for ages. And that's what this video is all about. I still have my original HP Envy X360 15 inch with the Ryzen 5 2500U inside. So when the new drivers were available, I installed them, updated a whole bunch of other things like Windows, the BIOS and other utilities that had received updates since I reviewed the system and put the updates through their paces. So the driver version I'm testing here is Radeon Software version 19.2.3, the latest version as of filming. I'm going to go through our usual suite of laptop benchmarks to see how the HP Envy X360 performs now compared to how it launched back in 2017. There's also going to be some game testing later with direct before and after comparisons focusing on improvements from just the drivers alone. I'm not going to bore you with the results from our CPU limited workloads like PC Mark 10, video encoding, MATLAB 7-zip and so on. There's really no difference in performance between the original launch state of Ryzen Mobile and today with the updated drivers. This makes sense. The drivers are GPU drivers and many of the apps we benchmark don't use the GPU at all. So if you're expecting a few more Cinebench points from updating Windows, installing a new BIOS and grabbing Radeon software 19.2.3, well, pretty much think again. Where the benefits start to come in is in GPU accelerated productivity workloads. Blender is a prime example. Back when I reviewed the Envy X360, I could only get Blender to successfully complete our benchmark render once. Every other time it crashed or stalled, it was pretty much a complete disaster. The app was unusable for anyone that actually was going to go and do any creative work in it. Since these driver updates, without updating the Blender application itself, the benchmark now completes every single time, so that's a massive stability improvement. Performance has also improved. Our Blender benchmark, which runs entirely on the GPU, was 17% faster after all of these updates. That's a pretty handy improvement, placing AMD's integrated GPU around the mark of Intel's latest Core i7-8565U in a 25W configuration running the workload on the CPU. Given this is comparing a Ryzen 5 APU to a generally much faster Intel Core i7, that's a pretty good result purely from software tweaks and GPU acceleration. Even better is the ability to run some benchmarks that didn't work at all previously. Adobe Photoshop, for example, had problems with acceleration with the initial set of drivers. 
Now it does work, allowing the Ryzen 5 2500U to slightly outperform the Core i5 8250U in our Iris Blur test. CompuBench is another workload I had a lot of problems with originally. Half the test didn't work at all, the other half would frequently crash to the tune of about 10 crashes for every one working benchmark run. With the latest drivers, there are still a few crashes, but they're pretty infrequent and generally it's now possible for the entire benchmark suite to run without issue. Performance isn't improved, but better stability is certainly welcome. I still had issues with Adobe Premiere though. Even with all the latest updates, the Ryzen 5 2500U is still unable to GPU accelerate the crucial Lumetri color effect in Premiere with 4K footage. Lumetri is a widely used effect among creators for color correction, and while applying this to 4K footage might seem intensive, it can easily be GPU accelerated on Intel's integrated graphics and all of Nvidia's recent discrete GPUs. The effect not working with Ryzen Mobile is a definite outlier, although Lumetri is bizarrely still compatible with 1080p footage and below with this processor. Many other GPU accelerated effects also work. However, our Premiere benchmark uses 4K footage and Lumetri color effects. This means even today, Ryzen Mobile gets destroyed by a mere Intel Core i5-8250U, taking over 30 minutes to render on the CPU alone. Without Lumetri effects, the Ryzen 5 2500U is faster. I have flagged this issue to AMD again, so hopefully their driver team will look into it or at least provide an explanation as to why this GPU accelerated effect is incompatible with Ryzen Mobile GPUs if it turns out it's not possible to fix. Moving on to games, and once again here, I want to stress how much better this new driver is with regards to stability, crashes, and other technical issues. Previously, I had all sorts of problems with Ryzen Mobile gaming. Sometimes I'd load a game and the GPU had underclocked itself massively compared to the previous load. Sometimes the game would only work in full screen mode and present artifacts when using borderless windowed mode. Sometimes a game would have VSync forced on despite the option being disabled everywhere. There were also generic crashes and system reboots. Uh, it was pretty much a disaster even in lightweight games like Fortnite. With the latest drivers, I haven't experienced any of these issues. All the games that I previously had trouble with now work fine. Crashes are gone, basic functionality works. It's like the system has gone from a pre-release set of software in an alpha stage to a proper finalized driver that's been tested by more than two people. So it's pretty great. In terms of performance, AMD has claimed this is where users should see big improvements over the launch drivers, specifically 17% average performance gains in eSports titles when comparing driver version 17.4 to 19.2.3. However, all my previous testing was done with version 17.7, .7, not the older 17.4, so let's see how the differences compare there. With Fortnite, I recorded a 5% improvement to average frame rates and no improvement to 1% lows, with my 17.7 .7 driver data coming from runs where the game did not randomly underclock the GPU. A 5% improvement is good, it's nothing to complain about, but it's certainly not a huge update. The bigger improvement is that you're now going to get maximum performance every time you boot the game, and not a random lotto of varying performance. And the GPU still provides a good experience at 1080p with low settings. When testing CSGO, there was no difference in performance before and after the driver update. This is another game that runs well on the Ryzen 5 2500U, but don't expect a performance improvement. Performance is much better in Civilization VI, increasing by 15%, which is certainly up there with AMD's 17% improvement claims. For a game that I think is well suited to a laptop form factor, getting up near the 60fps mark in intensive scenarios at native 1080p is a pretty good result. With GTA V, I saw no difference in average performance, but a handy increase in 1% low performance that allows the game to run slightly smoother in general. While you will still have to play on the lower settings, performance is respectable from a low power APU. Metro Last Light is the most punishing game I tested despite being an older game at this point. It's also the final game that we use for our Ultrabook um, game testing suite. Our average performance decreased by around 9%, which was disappointing to see. However, this was compensated for with a large improvement to 1% lows, allowing the game to run more smoothly. Battery life is another thing I want to mention. Ryzen Mobile was never amazing from a battery life perspective, and early systems tended to have strange idle clock behavior, such as idling too high on the GPU. But that's now been resolved, which in a few battery benchmarks resulted in up to a 7% improvement. Nothing amazing, but I was surprised to see an improvement at all. Overall, these drivers definitely do bring a number of improvements. Performance is probably the least exciting improvement here. Most apps and games either saw zero improvements or only minor gains. 
There were a few outliers, notably Blender and Civilization VI that saw gains around 15%, but I don't think it's reasonable to expect gains like that in general. A small improvement is still an improvement though. The more important improvements come in the form of stability and bug fixes. Almost every issue I had with Ryzen Mobile, whether that was crashes, incompatibilities or other problems has now been resolved. Apps that didn't work previously now work. Games are much more stable and deliver more consistent performance. It's not perfect. There are still issues with things like Lumetri and Premiere and a few apps still do hang or crash more often than I would expect. But overall, this has been a significant step forward. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is support for some of AMD's driver features that are accessible on discrete GPUs such as Relive. Unfortunately, that's not available yet, which will disappoint a few people. However, these drivers are still a work in progress, and it seems AMD spent most of their efforts here on stability and performance with features to come later. And I guess that's part of the beauty of this new driver ecosystem for Ryzen Mobile. We won't have to wait months for a new GPU driver for their laptop APUs. We should expect monthly updates in line with their desktop cards. Like with their discrete GPUs, over time I expect bugs to be patched, features to get added, and performance to improve. Of course, that's only a promise at this stage, but we'll have to wait and see how this all plays out, and I am expecting things to definitely improve over the coming months. Should it have taken AMD this long to get their act together on Ryzen Mobile drivers? Definitely not, but at least they have, and as the Ryzen Mobile platform grows, this shouldn't be as much of an issue as it was for early adopters. That's it for this one. Our next update on Ryzen Mobile will hopefully be checking out new 3000 series laptops in the next few months. Uh, I'm not expecting to see massive performance improvements, but it will be interesting to see how the minor spec bump stacks up against Intel. Of course, you can subscribe for more reviews. Consider supporting us on Patreon, and I'll catch you in the next one.